2013. All right, guys, this is the fourth film in the DCEU, and where does it rank? My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. All right, guys, welcome back. And like I said, this is the fourth film in the DCEU, and a lot is riding on it because Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and Suicide Squad overall had mixed reviews. I'll talk about my opinion on those films later. But a lot of people are feeling like this Wonder Woman movie could break or make the cinematic universe for DC Comics. Now, this movie is directed by Patty Jenkins. If you are familiar with her work, she's most known for her film that she did uh, called Monster, which stars Charlize Theron and Christina Ricci about the prostitute that became a, a serial killer. You know, very eerie. If you want to check that out, you can. But now she's doing Wonder Woman. Now, my expectations for this film have been super high through the roof. Just for some reason, when I first saw the trailer, I just knew that this movie was going to be good. I couldn't help myself. I thought it was just a great idea to have a woman director directing a woman, you know, like this is Wonder Woman. But now we have a full length blockbuster feature of Wonder Woman, and I just can't wait to talk to you about it. Now, the first thing that I love about this film was Themyscira. Themyscira is the lost remote island that all the Amazons reside in. They were created by a guy named Zeus. Many, many millennia ago or hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, whatever. And, they, you know, they're, they're just secluded on this island. And as soon as I saw Themyscira, I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to go there right now. This place is beautiful. It's remote. You know, it's not corrupt or anything like this. It's filled with a bunch of gorgeous women. And let me talk about the women just for a second. Me as a black man, African-American, I, I am glad to say that all the Amazon, all the Amazonian women are not white or have, you know, light skin. They had some white women in there. They had some brown women in there. They had some black women in there, too. So I was really, I was very surprised to see that. I, I was happy. I was like, okay, yeah, go ahead and represent my sister, you know, all the good stuff. So I'm glad there that they, you know, didn't just whitewash the whole cast and they had some type of diversity. But, you know, unfortunately, while this movie is making history, history because unfortunately especially in this country you know women are really most only valued you know from their physical looks and their appearance you know for the most part they don't want to be you know recognized for their brains and, and intellect or how strong they are not the case here with these Amazons. Not only are they beautiful, but they are all strong and super intelligent. And they ain't taking no crap off of nobody. And I love that. I mean, seriously, I didn't know if I wanted to date one of them or if I wanted them to train me so I can survive in the streets or somebody try to come, you know, point a gun to my head or something like that because they're just that vast. I mean, in the world that they live in on Themyscira, I mean, it is just beyond wonderful. I mean, I really want to go there seriously i mean after i see you know my i could imagine myself planning my next vacation based off how Themyscira looked you know i, I want to go to hawaii or just some place around with some island no one ever i said hawaii some island no one ever heard of so when, when i'm closing my eyes on the beach or whatever i can imagine that it's Themyscira. and one thing that i like about this movie is as soon as the action starts and you see it from the trailers when the world war and it takes place during the world war one where the evil germans are rushing the beach and then you come see them riding on those horses and they are about to kick ass and one thing that I like a lot is, you know, I'm going to take a little sidebar here for a second. Remember that movie, uh, The Mighty Ducks, that came out in the early 90s with Emilio Estevez? And what did they have in that movie that made them so successful? <laughs> what did they have in that movie that made them so successful? It was the Flying V. And I can see that Emilio Estevez somehow went back in time to Themyscira and copied that technique because it worked for him on the ice and it worked for the Amazons on the beach when they were wrecking shot with these Germans as they were killing them. I mean, and the action is just so precise. They were doing some things and fighting techniques, fighting in one just ways I've never seen before with rope and shields. And I mean, they didn't have any guns. They just had bows and arrows. And they were so thorough with those bows and arrows. They were doing things with bows and arrows that I've never seen before in any movie. 
And I'm not just saying, you know, pulling back the bow and letting the arrow, pulling back the bow and letting the arrow fly into your enemy. No, they were just, I don't want to spoil it for you here, but all these jumping and flipping and twisting and whatnot with these arrows, it was very creative. And I love the way they fought. I mean, it really showed that they have been training all of their lives and they are just ready to kick some ass. I mean, you're not just going to run up on these women's beach without a fight. I mean, you're going to die viciously. And I loved every moment of that. Now, jumping back just a second before that was the training. I love a movie with training and great training montages. And it was just beautiful seeing Gal Gadot, Princess Diana as a little girl. And she's just so eager to help out. And that just, I mean, that just gets you on board with her character immediately because just a sweet, innocent little girl that won't harm a fly or butterfly or nothing. And she just wants to help. I mean, it's just like in her blood and her veins. She is a fighter. You know, she's a demigod or a god, excuse me. And she just wants to help. She's like, mom, please train me. I, I, you know, I don't want to read books no more. You know, just please train me. And I, I just love that about her character. She's humble. She's sweet. And that's just a great way to get you on board with Gal Gadot. Now, her character, Gal Gadot, I will say that when she was announced, when she was cast as Wonder Woman a few years ago at Comic-Con, I was pissed off. I was angry. I was frustrated. Like, what the hell are you thinking, Zack Snyder? Not Zack Snyder. Uh, but the people that are over the decision, you know, at Warner Brothers, like, why would y'all cast this, nut I mean, Wonder Woman? I mean, my goodness gracious, it's Wonder Woman. Why would you cast some no-name actress that no one has ever heard of? Only time I've heard of her before was in Fast Five. And I'm not saying that I want am the Amazons or Wonder Woman to look like She-Hulks. You know, with muscles everywhere. No, but at the same time, I want them to have some type of muscle tone, some muscle definition. And I will, I will just remember Gal Gadot, you know, in that one scene when she was trying to seduce that guy in that uh, white bikini, she was just too thin. And I was like, this is just a horrible casting decision. But I, I will humble myself and take it back that I was wrong. Gal Gadot, you wrecked it in this role, and not just as Wonder Woman, but as a character. I believe every word of dialogue that was coming out of your mouth. It was genuine, it was sincere, and I am a believer. When there was when there was a concern, she emoted very well and showed great emotion and depth to her character. And she, you know, she was just really concerned with everything. Like, no, I believe in this, and we gotta fight here. And how can you stand for this? How can you call yourself a man? You know, I mean, she was just really delving in to her mother, her trainer to Chris Pine, which I'll get to in a second. I really loved her uh, character and her dialogue. She wrecked the hell out of this role. And the reason why, I mean, I'm saying that now is because, of course, she was in uh, Batman v Superman, which I have, which I have right here. You know, she there wasn't a big role for her in that film, which is fine, but you really only got to see her as Wonder Woman. I mean, she did a great job as Wonder Woman, you know, showing up in uniform and her costume fighting, but you really didn't get any character deaths from her in that film. But in this film, Wonder Woman, you do. And like I said, she did a great job. Next thing I want to talk about is Chris Pine and Steve Trevor. He did a great job as well, and the chemistry between him and Wonder Woman Gal Gadot, uh, Princess Diana, was just freaking flawless and hilarious. I love every moment of it. She, they're both like a fish out of water to their own, to each other's world or whatever, and they play it off each other very nice. I mean, everyone is asking the right questions at the right time as if you would. I mean, if some people are rushing the beach, okay, you may not have enough time to talk all this out. You want to fight and beat the bad guys and you want to talk later. And he was asking all the questions that he should because it doesn't make sense. Why is this this island here, island here out of nowhere with all these women? Where are the men? Why are you guys so freaking powerful and strong? What is this gold rope that you're wrapping me up with? I mean, he's asking all the necessary questions. And then on the flip side, Princess Diana, Wonder Woman, is doing the same thing. And she's not just like an idiot, like, oh, what is this contraption right here? I mean, she's not like a doofus. I mean, but she does ask, you know, questions that seem common sense to us, but she's never experienced this before. Never seen a man before in her life and uh, especially she's never seen a naked man and so you know I gave you a little nugget there but it's just hilarious and you know she's very intelligent in the way she uses her wits and you know tries to compare the knowledge that she's uh, studied coming up as a young adult with books they had on the island comparing notes with Chris Pine it's just hilarious and I, I love both of them together I mean it was just like a perfect match made in heaven and 
it couldn't have been any better, to be honest with you, between those two. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the action. And the action was already good towards the beginning of the field with the storming of the beach. And I'm not spoiling anything for you here. That's, you know, pretty not, you know, pretty common knowledge that that takes place uh, in the earlier part of the film. But that scene where she's on the battlefield taking all that bullet fire with her shield from then on, the action is just so well done. I mean, and what makes it so fun is she doesn't really know who she is or where she's coming from because she's 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 an Amazonian, but she's really not. And they kind of talk about that briefly in the film and excuse me and address it later. But she really just doesn't know who she is. So when she's fighting, it's fun seeing her discover her powers while she's in the middle of battle. She's like, oh snap, I didn't. I was trying to knock this guy out, but I wasn't trying to knock him way over there. Now, let me press pause in the action real quick, because once it ends on the first scene uh, uh, towards the beginning of the movie, it takes a while to get to the rest of the action, but you're not bored at all. Kind of like Man is Steel, kind of how it kind of took a long time to get to the action, and it just kind of blowing your head off. You're, you're not bored at all. You're laughing, and you're enjoying the dialogue, and you're just enjoying seeing Diana you know, come to London and her trying to get equipped to everything around her or whatever. That is just fun. Just seeing her interact with everybody and the other character, Eddie Candy. I mean, that's just hilarious. When she's in the shop trying on all the clothes, uh, that's just very funny. When she's carrying her sword around and they're saying, put this away, it doesn't go with the outfit. That's very funny. And you're just loving the slow build and how the story is developing and how they're tying in this fake comic book character into the real World War One, and you know they, you know how they tied that together and try to mesh it all together. I really did like that. So when the action does come later, it just makes it that much more impactful. And like I said, the action is top notch. I saw one review where one critic prior to this was talking about how he didn't like it, how they were showing her action, and then they kind of switched to a CGI character of Wonder Woman. Yes, they did switch over to a CGI character to have her jumping around and flipping on a, a few sequences there, but it didn't bother me at all. It didn't clock me out of the movie. And what I liked about the way they did that there or why they grounded it is while she is a CGI character, they still surrounded her with other live action characters, one being Chris Pine, just to ground it so the whole thing just doesn't seem like a video game. While she's doing her lasso of truth, swinging it all around on her sword and all of this stuff like this, there's somebody right next to her with a gun doing his things with his gun and bad net and all that. And it just kind of, you know, it just it's all cohesive and it just it just flows very well. And, you know, they're all thinking of one, fighting one. And I just love every moment of that. And there's really not too much to complain about in the first two acts, uh, act one, act two. But one thing, the two things that I will complain about coming act three is act three is just a little bit uneven when it does get to the climax, the final battle. I'm like, oh, OK, we're here now because I knew where the film was going, but I thought that they should have took a few more steps to get there. And it just doesn't rev up, you know, the way that you want it to. I mean, it, it's I mean, it, it's kind of just like. There was no warm up to it. It was just there. That's not a gripe, uh, but you know it could have been done a little bit better and flow smoothly. Another thing that I want to talk about that really just didn't I, I really didn't care for in the third act was where the line where the line of where the line of enemy lines begin and end because you have your bad guys and you know your Germans over here and you know who they're associated with. But then again, right down the street or not even that far, it seems like you got some good guys over here. And I'm just like, okay, why are they so close? You know, if the, I mean, if these guys are here, they can just easily go attack these guys over here. Or if they sent this bomb over here, they could have just done this a long time ago. That I, I don't really follow that too much. And also the reveal of Ares towards the end, it wasn't bad. It was, um... It was a good reveal, but they could have done a lot better. And well, I don't want to say a lot better. They could have done better because the actual fighting was okay, but they just kept stopping and starting. It just didn't flow through. And again, I did not know where the line, the, I didn't know where the enemy lines began and ended. I'm like, wait a minute. If there are bad guys over there and good guys over here, why aren't they fighting? And why aren't these good guys killing these bad guys and these bad guys killing these good guys? It was just a little inconsistent there. But the end battle, it was nice, you know, still seeing Diana, Wonder Woman, discover all of her powers. But at the same time, with the reveal of Ares, and you know he's in the movie, they could have fleshed that out a little bit more and made, I mean, 
You just have to see it for yourself because I don't want to spoil it for you. But he was threatening, but they could have made him more threatening. Just kind of imagine, and I'm exaggerating here, so don't take this to heart. But it's the best example that I can think of. Just imagine Pee Wee Herman in a bad guy costume. Okay, the costume on the outside looks badass. Like, oh, damn, you know. I don't want to run up on this dude. He looks like he can really F me up. But at the same time, you look under all that, and you're like, well, it's still just Pee Wee Herman under that. Yeah, he has all these powers, and he's strong, but it's still Pee Wee Herman. That's kind of how I took it. You know, I don't want to just completely crap on it, but it could have been a lot better. But, you know, just to be honest with you, doing the whole movie, I'm up here laughing and smiling and cheesing ear to ear like, yeah, this is like a nine territory, 9.5, dan dancing back and forth just like that. But, you know, when that third act came, you know, it kind of just dipped down a little bit. And I, I can't really give it that high of a rating. If I had to rate Wonder Woman out of a 1 out of 10, still a great rating, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. You may feel differently. Have you seen Wonder Woman? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. And just want to let you know, there is no post credit scene. So, you know, you don't have to stay and, you know, waste your time. I mean, if you want to pay respect to the, all the people that, you know, work hard on this movie, you know, go ahead and do that. They work very hard for you. But there is no post credit scene. I'm just letting you know. DC, Warner Brothers, they really don't do that. But they should. Take a page out of Marvel's book. And speaking about Marvel, yes, I do want to go to the red carpet premiere of Black Panther that comes out February of 2018 next year. I love comic books. I love Marvel. I love Black Panther. I'm black and the movie comes out of Black History Month, so that would just be a dream come true for me. Is it a likely chance I'll go? Who knows? It's a long shot. I know I'm going for it. So help me out by sharing this video 1,000 times. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, so you get all the content that I have to provide. You can also go to my website, bookmark it, and look me up on social media. But guys, this is the best film in the whole deep world. Oh, let me let me stop there. Is it the best? It's, it's definitely one or two. Because I have BVS, Dawn of Justice, which uh, the theatrical version was extremely disappointing, but the extended three-hour release was much better. And they also have, let me fix the mic back. I also have Man of Steel. I love this movie to death. I loved it. It was slow in the beginning, and um, but when that action came, I, I mean, still to me, ooh, I, I, you know, to me, Captain America: Civil War is the best action in any comic book movie, and Man of Steel is a close second. So, do I want to say, do I like Wonder Woman or Man of Steel more? I definitely don't like Suicide Squad. That was just garbage. Y'all all remember that crap right there? You know what I'm talking about. It's just a shitty mess. Oh, man. So, Man of Steel had better action. Wonder Woman had a better overall story. So, I would say that I did like Wonder Woman overall more than Man of Steel. So, you know, you can take that to the bank. So, guys, again, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for Wonder Woman. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brenda Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.